guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today we're actually going to do kind of a part two to a video that I made in the past. If you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that I have a series called Veil Lifted. Now I haven't been putting out Veil Lifted videos recently just because I haven't had time. So I did make a video essay about Nexium, which is a long story, but basically it was a self-improvement group, quote unquote. And within that self-improvement group there was a sex cult and it's a lot so I will link that video down below if you want the full kind of history on it because it's really screwed up and having the full scope of it will make this video make more sense to you before I get into the updates on what's going on with Nexium, on what's going on with the accused, I did want to thank today's sponsor, which is Shudder. Shudder is the Netflix of horror. It has the largest, fastest growing human curated selection of thrilling and dangerous entertainment filled with supernatural terrors, edge of your seat thrillers, and shocking horrors added each week. You can stream all of the above for $5.99 a month or $56.99 a year, and on all of your favorite devices, such as Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Xbox One, iOS, and Android. To try Shudder for free for 30 days, go to Shudder.com and use promo code READYTOGLARE. They're always releasing new content, and one movie I highly suggest is a horror comedy titled Boys From County Hell. So this movie is a spin on a vampire flicks that is both bloody and comedic, and I find this type of movie to be perfect for when you want horror, but you also want something lighthearted at the same time. I highly suggest checking it out. It's really fun, but also creepy at the same time time and what more could we really want? So to try Shudder for free for 30 days, remember to go to Shudder.com and use promo code READYTOGLARE. Get started streaming the best horror, thriller, and supernatural content. Shudder's expertly curated collection includes must-see titles like Vicious Fun, The Mortuary Collection, and PG Psycho Gorman, plus all the best horror documentaries and the hit Creepshow TV series from executive producer Greg Nicotero, of The Walking Dead. Thank you, Shudder, for sponsoring this video. So if you don't know about what happened with Nexium, if you're not really clued in, basically there are two names you need to know. Now, one of them is Keith Rainier. So he basically was the leader of the whole operation. The other person you need to know is Allison Mack. If that name sounds familiar to you, it's because she was an actress in the show Smallville, which makes it a little bit more surreal that you've seen her as an actress, but there's this dark underbelly that we're finding out about. Keith Rainier used Allison Mack as his second hand. And the fact that Allison Mack is a woman is also an important thing to note because women tend to trust women more. And I think she used that in order to basically recruit people for this sex cult. So starting off with Keith Rainier, he was sentenced to 120 years in prison. So there were many of his victims who spoke up against him in court. I will link the article down below if you wanna see everything of what was said by multiple victims. But there's one who's identified as Camilla who kind of frames things well in the sense of it gives you an idea of how screwed up Keith Rainier was. And she said that he started sexually abusing her when she was 15 and he was 45. During their 12 year quote unquote relationship, Camilla said Rainier expected her to be available for sex at all hours. He ordered her to weigh less than hundred pounds and directed her to get an abortion and she said that she attempted suicide once. And then other former Nexium members said Rainier preyed on insecure people who hoped that immersing themselves in expensive self-help classes would unlock the key to fulfillment. Even highly educated people became trapped inside the system, which he sold as the only way to overcome their fears, shaming anyone who quit. This is a very abbreviated version, obviously, of everything he did, but there is a very common theme with him that any woman he decided to, well, in that case, rape, because she was a minor. But any woman he decided to have sex with had to be on call, had to kind of be there as a sex doll, basically, as opposed to a human. He just kind of expected the woman to just always be open to doing things, which in and of itself is abusive and toxic. But aside from that, there's a lot that was wrong there on different levels from the fact that he had women branded, literally branded with his initials. The fact that women in Nexium were basically treated as slaves, the fact that they had to put up collateral. So most of the time the collateral for them 
being in Nexium and getting this quote unquote self improvement included them giving nude photos of themselves to the leaders. So if they ever left or if they ever threatened to leave, the leaders could be like, hey, if you leave, I'm gonna show this to the public, which is extremely fucked up. The only, the sole fact that that was required in order to be part of this group is so sick and disgusting because it shows you the group's intentions from the beginning, right? It's kind of like the whole saying about if you stop being friends with someone and the minute you stop being friends, they badmouth you, it's kind of like they were planning to badmouth you from the beginning. I find it to be very similar here in the sense of if someone's asking you for something to blackmail you with, they're planning on blackmailing you end of. Whether you leave, whether you betray them, whatever, that's already in their minds. So I find it really screwed up because it's obvious that there was never pure intent on Nexium's part, on Keith Raniere's part. Keith Raniere's secondhand woman was Allison Mack and she is heading to prison. But the thing that bothers me is that she's going to prison for a whole three years, which I find really fucked up because if you're the second hand to someone who is involved in sex trafficking, sexual abuse, sexual abuse of children, things like that, I don't know how three years makes sense. Truly, I do not. I don't know if it has anything to do with her being a woman and you know how women, it's difficult for them to be seen as criminals by some people apparently. I truly do not know, but she did have a big role in the recruitment of other women because like I said, women trust women more than they might trust some random dude. And the worst part is that she's going to a prison that's like, prison light. She's going to the same prison that Lori Laughlin and Felicity Huffman went to. And a lot of kind of like celebrities, quote unquote, have gone to this prison because it's so low key. Last I read of it, when Lori Laughlin went to that prison, I recall, and I may be incorrect, but I believe I recall reading that they even have like yoga classes at this prison. It's low security. It's not the prison you envision when you think of the word prison. It's very much low key and chill for what it is. And considering the crimes she's involved with, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it how someone can get 120 years and the other person just gets three. I get that she's like number two in this whole operation, but she's still number two. If number one's getting 120 years, how can she be getting three? Especially with the knowledge of what he was doing. So she actually faced up to 40 years in prison, but pleaded guilty to conspiracy and racketeering charges in 2019. She had a key role in the formation of the sex cult within Nexium, known as DOS. Women joined the group believing it would lead to self-empowerment, but they served as slaves and were forced to disclose damaging information, like I said, and she was a part of that. So I don't know how the three years make sense to anyone, let alone the judge. An actually interesting part is that Keith Raniere in court maintained his innocence basically his lawyer said that he was in love with in love quote unquote with the women he was having sex with or was abusing and the judge actually interrupted the lawyer and was like no you're insulting everyone's intelligence by claiming this and you know just stop basically so even the judge had enough of it with Keith Raniere and his lawyer and the whole defense they set up I don't know why Allison Mack kind of got through more easily. Maybe there was less evidence against her, though, frankly, that's hard to believe as well. You guys can let me know how much you think her being a woman might have affected the fact that her sentence is basically a joke. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always, and I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>